60 The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Another uh, weekend of mayhem and violence in Chicago as we're still mourning the uh, murder of Officer Luis Huesca. Ten shots, ten shots, ten shots, ten shots. Chant after me in the direction of all of those race hustlers and uh, political grifters out there. Ten shots, that's how many times Officer Huesca was shot in that fatal carjacking. And Dexter Reed was shot 13 times, but Dexter Reed fired 11 rounds. Right, 13 shots, 13 shots. That's what we were hearing all week when that uh, body cam video came out. Um, so there's that, the uh, Nobleman Pub in West Town getting knocked over. The owner there being shot at doesn't have been there 25 years. He's thinking about going back to Ireland. Safer uh, there, and he's got a newborn baby on the way, so they might move. And what's happening uh, in Chicago, in New York, Baltimore, St. Louis, uh, I think is nicely encapsulated in the story out of the Bronx. We brought to you earlier, but it, it, I mean, this is this is the culture. And as we've said many times on this show, the names of the office holders are interchangeable. If you put uh, Brandon Johnson and Kim Fox in L.A., it would be no different. If you put Karen Bass uh, uh, and uh, uh, what's the L.A. prosecutor's name? I'm blanking on it now. Gascon, exactly. You put him them in Chicago, be no different. Interchangeable parts. The Bronx DA, Soros funded Bronx DA, of course. Is there any other kind? In big cities. Her name is Darcel Clark. Uh, and this is in regards to a case where Anthony Nelson, a MTA worker, was assaulted by a repeat, and I mean capital R, repeat violent offender named Anthony Wright. Robert Kelly, Transport Workers Local 100 representative, uh, took to the press to call out. Bronx DA Darcel Clark about her handling of this latest assault case, this latest assault case involving repeat capital R violent offender Anthony Wright. And all of the people in this story are black. So sorry, you can't media, you can't play the racial politics you like to play with this, which is why I won't get much coverage except on shows like ours. Today, the office of Bronx District Attorney Darcel Clark consenting to a mental health evaluation. After 40, 40, 40 assaults, he has been evaluated. So this little pushing things off and, and, and what have you, another evaluation, wasting taxpayers' money and what have you, it's a bunch of bull****. I'm just going to say it like it is. And it needs to stop. This is video of Wright sucker punching an Asian woman in Chinatown, knocking her out cold. Surrounded by his family, the union, and MTA leadership, Anthony Nelson says his case will hopefully result in more respect for MTA workers. I don't care if you're on the ground, I don't care if you're at an elevated platform, I don't care if you're on a bus. There's a level of protection and respect that needs to be seen when you see an MTA worker. We're in the service industry. They're getting assaulted, they're getting harassed. It's just not acceptable. The DA's office telling Fox 5 the defense asked to have the case sent to mental health court for evaluation of right to see if that court would be more appropriate to handle the case or if it should remain in regular court. Right. Everyone deserves a 41st chance, don't they, in America? Goodness. Uh, That was the Fox affiliate reporting, so we'll give uh, that Fox affiliate credit for covering the case as well. For more on this, please be joined by Jeffrey Anderson. He's the president of the American Main Street Initiative, a think tank for everyday Americans. He served as director of the Bureau of Justice Statistics at the Department of Justice from 2017 to 2021. Jeffrey Anderson, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, You know, the response that we get when we cover stories like this, I'm sure, is not unfamiliar to you. Oh, it's, uh, you know, right wingers and their fear porn and their crime porn. These are one offs and point of fact. Uh, crime is going down, murders are down in Chicago, and so on and so forth. And you have, as I said, different politicians of the same political stripes saying the same thing in other major cities. Are they right? No, they're completely wrong. And I think the American people 
have a clear sense of this, they see that crime has spiked in America and, and uh, the stats back them up. The, the Bureau of Justice Statistics put out statistics showing that from 2019, so before all the BLM and def- defund the police, George Floyd stuff, from 2019 until the most recent stats we have, which is 2022, violent crime rose in urban areas by 58%, a 58% increase across just three years. And if you take out the, the sort of lesser violent crimes of simple assault, a lot of bar, bar fights and that sort of thing, then the rise is actually 73% across that three-year period. So we've got a clear example here of, of experimenting with failed policies of the past, of lax law enforcement and race baiting and all that, and, and we got the same results we got about a half century ago of rising crime. You know, I, I know there's these examples that uh, people point to, like uh, Giuliani comes into New York and uh, and he and Commissioner Kelly introduce uh, a broken windows policing, clean out of Times Square, turn that city around. It seems to me that we're in a different place in terms of how far back is the climb, because, you know, prior to Giuliani in New York, for example, in the late in, when Chicago was similarly situated in New York in the 70s, too, it was pretty, pretty grimy and gritty and violent. Um, but there was no defund the police movement. There was never a sort of a segment of society that was opposite the line of the police. And and it still sort of persists. They're not saying defund the police anymore, but there's still a push for social workers to replace police. There's still the demonization of police when it is politically expedient to do so. And it seems to me like, uh, as I said, the, the journey back to the rule of law in these jurisdictions is perhaps going to be a lot more arduous than people think. Well, it could be, but I think it's more for a slightly different reason. I think it's the challenge of getting people to embrace those same successful policies you mentioned, like from Giuliani's New York, of, of actually having broken windows policing, where you, what that means is you, you actually enforce civilized norms. You don't have tent cities and marijuana stench and shoplifting and drug addicts wandering around all over the place. You, you actually create an orderly environment with police on the beat, and as a result of the sort of uh, the fact that people walk around, it, it seems orderly. It seems like a, a livable place. You tend to end up with a lot less violent crime as well. So I think it's the same policies that need to be followed that cleaned things up last time around a few decades ago. But getting the kind of people who are who are committed to this, uh, uh, you know, this defund police kind of mentality and all the race baiting that goes with it, getting any of them on board is obviously going to be impossible. So it's going to have to be the, the, the great majority of Americans who just force their hand and say, we've had enough and we want to have cities that are, are livable and, and basically crime-free, not what we're seeing right now. But do you think that will ever happen in places like a hotbed of San Francisco? Well, well less there probably than in more sensible places. But I think even, even in places like San Francisco, at some point people do reach a breaking point. And, and uh, when it starts to affect them personally, they get a lot more interested. So, and I think, you know, you start to see changes in voting patterns as a result. A lot of, a lot of black Americans, as you know, are the, are the people who are the, on the worst end of this. With, they're the, the victims of crime when, when these things aren't enforced a lot of the time. And you're starting to see more evidence of black Americans thinking about voting for uh, Republican candidates or more conservative candidates. And that can help motivate people as well. Well, we have some structural problems now in, in some cities and states that need to be overcome in a way they didn't uh, a couple of generations ago. For example, uh, the no cash bail laws in New York and Illinois. Right. I mean, all this stuff is, is part of the same package of let's just make things as, uh, as pleasant as possible for criminals. Well, let's, let's forget all the lessons of, of all of human history, basically, that if you have crime without punishment, you'll have more crime. And, and again, we see the results. This, this 58% spike in urban violent crime in three years is just really, that's an incredible increase in violent crime. And, and one that, of course, President Biden and his media allies are, as you alluded to, are, uh, are denying and they're pretending all as well. But I don't think most Americans see it that way. It actually really kind of parallels the, uh, the inflation debate and how we're told not to worry about the rising prices, but everybody sees what's going on there, too. Jeffrey Anderson, president of the American Main Street Initiative, a think tank for everyday Americans. He served as director of the Bureau of Justice Statistics, he just mentioned, at uh, DOJ from 2017 to 2021. Jeffrey Anderson, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. 
My pleasure. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The stories you need to know to start your day. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank. It's a bank where relationships still matter. Signature Bank knows your name and your story. I'm Dan Proft, and I know this because Signature Bank is my business bank. I'm Larry Nora, founder and CEO of You Store It, a network of award-winning self-storage facilities in the Chicago area, and a customer of Signature Bank. We've developed over 70 storage centers throughout the city and suburbs, and our business continues to grow. We need a bank who understands the neighborhoods and communities where we are making investments. We found that in Signature Bank. They know this city and its neighborhoods because they are based right here in Chicago. Finding a local banking institution like Signature Bank has been critical to the success of You Store It, and we look forward to a long-term relationship. Signature Bank is looking for their next success story. To learn more about turning your business vision into reality, visit SignatureBank.Bank. Signature Bank, helping local businesses succeed. Member.